This year, we're going to have the 10th anniversary celebration for Hurricane Katrina. And it sounds strange to celebrate a devastating event that caused so much pain and suffering. But we're celebrating the fact that we've overcome this. We're celebrating the rebirth, the resurrection of our city, of our school, and of so many people who learned from the lessons of Katrina that we can do it if we work together. What I remember was going to bed on a Sunday night with the hurricane missing New Orleans, being quite grateful, thanking God, going to sleep, and being awakened by a phone call the next morning. The levees broke, sister, I am swimming. It was unbelievable. So it wasn't the hurricane. It was not the act of God. It was the act of man's inefficiency to know how to do things that caused the difficulties we had. Well, if people did this, people can fix this. So that's when I went ahead. And I knew if we didn't come back, I really knew in my heart, if we didn't come back, this whole area would not come back. We have been a hallmark out here for so many years. We had 1,253, I think, at the time of Katrina, grades eight through 12, all girls. The highest place I saw was 10 and a half feet of water where it started. When I got here, uh, which was a couple of weeks later, it was down three or four feet. But it was not water, it was this thick black stuff. Of course, one of the challenges was to get electricity. So I started on that with the city. <laughs> we just lost it again. That, that is unbelievable, huh? Nobody's gonna believe you when you tell them that. The electricians came to me and said, Sister, the one thing we have to be is connected to the city. We had a, a state representative whose office was around here, and I called him and I said, will you help me get this? And he assured me that if I was ready to open, he would have power to the school, and he did. We had maintenance employees working for us who become every possible thing a maintenance employee could ever be. Teachers who became janitors wonderful teachers who were just as wonderful cleaning up the school when we needed help doing that. Uh, it was just amazing that everybody just rose to a level beyond their own expectations in life. I wasn't qualified totally to be a CPA, to be a financier, to negotiate loans and leases and all this stuff. I wasn't qualified really and totally to be a contractor. I was qualified to run a school, and that was my ultimate goal. When we walked in, I had not been in the cafeteria. The one room we could put them all in was our cafeterias. And we walked in, and those girls started applauding they were crying, they were laughing. Thank you, sister, thank you, Miss Semno. It was such probably the greatest day of my life. I thought if I died right now, I'd be fine. <laughs> you know? The students have a resilience because they're young to start off with. But when you face adversity and you see around you models of courage, models of hope, models of leadership, meaning you do what you can do with the gifts that you have, to help others achieve goodness, then it transforms people to have that approach to life. And so I think it transformed those here at the time, and it has continued to be a transforming experience. So you've got to have faith in God. You've got to have trust in your fellow human persons, no matter what they're doing, and, and believe in the goodness that's out there. We so often see in the press the bad stuff. There's lots of good stuff.